Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, April 13th, 2020 uh, Board of Commissioners meeting for Radnor Township. Uh, if those of us who could, because we do not have fixed cameras, would rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, the rest of us who have fixed cameras, please remain seated and join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the flag, to the flag of the United States, United States of, America, States of America, America and to the republic, to the republic for which it stands, which it stands one, nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. So we will start with public comment. I have received thus far three, um, and since they're relatively short, I'll just read all three of them. The first is from Melissa Kahn. She writes, uh, subject line support for the nomination of William White as township manager. I've known and worked with Bill White for over 10 years and he is the best manager I've had over my 25 year career. In that time I've always found him to be fair, honest, and approachable. He'll bring these same qualities to the table when serving Radnor residents as township manager. Bill is a great listener and lifelong public servant who will help shepherd the township through good times and inevitable challenges. Melissa Cobb. Next is an email from Amy Lacey, subject public comment for item 3D. Good evening, commissioners. I'm writing in support of the nomination of Bill White as township manager. I have worked for Radnor Township for 20 years and with Bill White for the last 10 years. I've witnessed the excellent leadership he displays daily as well as support of his staff. He truly cares about this community and brings a sense of stability and honesty to his everyday work ethic. I have great respect for him and think he will make a tremendous manager for Radnor Township. The third and final email for the initial public comment is from Peggy Hagen. It is Ray Bill William White. Good evening, commissioners. I am writing in support of William White to be named township manager. I have worked with Bill White for almost 10 years and have the utmost respect for him as a person and as a leader. Bill makes himself available and is respectful to staff. Bill is an excellent employee and expects the same from the staff. Bill is one of the rare individuals who possesses intelligence, common sense, and emotional intelligence. This is what makes him a great leader. Stay safe and healthy. Uh, last one that just snuck in from Vera De Mayo, Resolution 2020-53, nomination of William White as Township Manager. Commissioners, I would like to give my full support for the nomination of William White as Township Manager. Bill, as a department head, has always shown the leadership, responsibility, and communication skills necessary to manage our finance department. I believe using him in a higher level position as township manager will only improve those skills and would be a great asset to Radnor Township residents and employees. He always stops by to say hello, has a sense of humor, asks if he can help me or our department in any way, and most importantly, makes me feel appreciated. Thank you for your time. Very good meal. Thank you to all of you. With that in mind, uh, moving to consent agenda. Is there any <coughs> item that the commissioners would like to pull from consent agenda? Yes. Which would you like to pull, Rich? Meeting minutes. Okay. Is there any other items that commissioners or staff would like to pull from the agenda? Hearing none, Rich, let's move to item 2B, approval of minutes of the Board of Commissioner meeting of March 9th, 2020, March 16, 2020, March 25, 2020, and March 30th, 2020. Typically, we don't include verbatim recitations of public comment. So that's true. We ordinarily don't have um, public comment emailed into us. This is kind of a new scenario, and I imagine that staff was erring on the side of caution because including the public comment in the minutes was my initial proposal in lieu of reading them verbatim. Um, I honestly don't have an opinion one way or the other. The, the emails are already a part of the uh, videos, so I just open up to the floor. Does anybody feel one way or the other? Yeah, I think that they should be, uh, they should be posted because you're reading them, you may get a word wrong, those are their words. Um, you always hear of the, Slogan, not slogan, but the uh, phrase to kill the messenger, not that we're going to kill you, Jack. Um, <laughs> but um, you're, you're speaking someone else's words. So I think that uh, those words should be uh, memorialized in writing uh, for the benefit of the person that wrote them. I'll second that. 
So, so Jack, just, just to be clear then, when we go back to normal meetings at the township building and somebody reads, comes up to the podium and reads a statement and says, I'd like to submit a written, a written record for the minutes, that will then be published the next meeting. So that would be inconsistent with the logic that Sean just articulated, which is he wants the meeting minutes included because I'm the person reading as opposed to having the resident. If the resident comes up and reads at the lectern, then the resident obviously has gotten to express that person's feelings in their own words without my emphasis or inflection. And then they rely on whatever it is that they said. There's not the same reason. What if, what if, and they're captured on video. What if they have a lengthy statement and want to condense it to five minutes and say, I have a longer statement for the record? I mean, honestly, we don't print these things out, I don't think. I, other than the scanning time, I don't have a problem with it. I don't love the idea of tasking staff with scanning a 500 page epistle, though. I would, um, I would like to review that just, uh, Obviously, I've been on the board for a short amount of time, but we've not asked for formal submitted testimony in public comment. That's sort of what it would feel like that we're either permitted or encouraged to do so. I'm not against asking for that. It may allow people to uh, present a short statement and, and give more detail in a, in a, a written submission, but I think um, it's something that maybe we would want to review uh, beyond just this discussion. Obviously open to discussing it further here. I just, it sort of, it to, to me, it lends it to a formal testimony and that's not what we're trying to elicit from public comment. We're trying to allow people to come up five minutes at a time, discuss things that are on the agenda that are of concern to them or things around the community that they um, want to uh, bring to our attention, but it starts to feel like witnesses and testimony if we're encouraging written. Um, just my first impulse. So I'll, I'll just go forward and saying in the future, I don't care if someone wants us if they want to read something and then submit it and we put it in the minutes, the next meeting. I mean, I'm fine with that. I also think that if someone comes up to the lectern with minutes, they'll be more concise. Um, they'll have their thoughts more organized as well. So I think it should definitely be submitted when Jack reads it. But if someone wants to submit it after the fact, and all it is is they email something uh, to the township and the township just puts it in the next meeting's minutes, that's fine. They're speaking. It's memorialized on a YouTube. So I don't see how it would be any different if someone would just uh, send in the email to, uh, I don't know, to say the township, say Jennifer, and Jennifer just puts it in in the minutes, it's it's there, it's on the record regardless. So why not, uh, I, I think it would be best practices if someone wants to do it, go ahead, no big deal. So that would be for people who do speak openly and mm -hmm. just to, to provide supporting um, document either contemporaneously or after the fact, rather than opening up this type of thing where we've had to because it's virtual, mm -hmm. we're allow, allowing people to put their thoughts in writing and submit it. Mm -hmm. um ahead of time so yeah. i guess would we draw the line there that you actually have to be there in person in order to be able to submit a follow-up email or can people just start emailing in comments that then need to be incorporated do they all have to be read out or are they simply incorporated in minutes to be reviewed after the meeting has taken place i think i guess i i think we need to put some structure around it um because otherwise it, you know, it becomes, I think we all as, as um, commissioners get a lot of emails and, you know, we try to respond to them and staff is great about kicking in, but if every email were be, to be then part of the record, I would, I would encourage us to kind of put some structure around it. So I guess I would like to encourage it, you know, having people the op giving people the opportunity to email in their comments uh even when we are back in our regular setting i think is um i think it's a nice option and i think it's something that um we should explore so that people either come and make their comments in public and so then that's the the record that is on the video 
or people can submit via email, um, which we obviously see, at least so far, seems to work. They do it this way for the school district. Um, there is the option for people to either come to public comment and speak for four minutes, at, or there is the option for people to send in an email if they can't. And I, that is what I would like to see uh, the Board of Commissioners move towards. If you come and submit public comment, um, and it's, or it's recorded on video, then that's the record of what you said, in my mind. You don't need to then submit written testimony, you know, a written version of what you said. You're, you're there and that's your, your uh, version. But when somebody is reading someone else's email, I think in order to be sure that my email was properly read, um, it should be recorded in the minutes. And that's the way the school district does it too. <clears throat> I, I would suggest you go back to the Sunshine Act, which tells you what should be in minutes. And I'll just read a summary of what goes into minutes. Um, date and place of the meet, time, date and place of the meeting, the names of the members present, the substance of all official action taken during the meeting, a record how each individual voted. The minutes also must list all members of the public who participated in the meetings and a summary of their comments. So, so I, I know that um, some municipalities, when people stand up at a public meeting and they're there in person, they have a lengthy statement and they, they demand that the lengthy statement be included in the meeting minutes. Some municipalities I've seen just don't put them in the meeting minutes, but a, make a reference in the meeting minutes and then append the written document to the meeting minutes. Um, however, that all has to go into the official minute book. And I don't know, uh, Jennifer's on this, I don't know whether Radnor's done that in the past. Um, so you could have a lot of requests to append a lot of documents to the meeting minutes. And just following up what um, Moira said, I, I think we ought to take a better look at the Sunshine Act and then, you know, before extraneous documents, whether they're emails, I think they have to be summarized in the meeting minutes. Uh, but before you start attaching any kind of document to the meeting minutes, let's see if, if that makes some sense, given what could, what could happen. Um, most municipalities won't do that. They'll, they'll, they'll keep a record of the document, but it doesn't go in the minute book. Um, there's a reference in the minutes to it and where it could be found and what it is and what the summary is. But, um, you know, you have an official meeting minute book, which, Jennifer, I assume it's, you know, after every set of minutes is approved and signed off and there's a seal put on it, it gets put, it, it gets locked in the minute book, correct? That's correct. So just, I mean, I would suggest that the board table this for now and let me uh, give you a, a better recommendation uh, in terms of what's required and then what's optional and that what the ramifications are. Uh, in terms of appending any kind of documents. I think, I think the public comment that you got by email ought to be summarized. So-and-so submitted a public comment that said X, but the actual document itself, I think is a separate issue. I would be fine with that. Is, I guess I'll move to table consent agenda item 2B. Is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Um, sounds like uh, motion to table passes six to one. Uh, returning to consent agenda item 2A, disbursement review and approval. I heard no objections to that before, so I'll just move to approve the disbursement review and approval. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Thanks. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to committee reports. Resolution number 2020-50, authorization for King of Prussia Road and Glen Mary Road intersection, PennDOT application for traffic signal approval, CE 160. Uh, Mr. Norsini, could you lead us into this? Thank you, Mr. President. So these have been before the board many times. Uh, as you're aware, we have uh, a capital project for a rapid flashing beacon at the intersection of Glen Mary and King of Prussia Road. As part of the process of getting this approved by PennDOT, 
we're required to have the resolution of the TE 160 adopted by the board. This resolution basically states that the township will only operate and maintain that flashing rapid beat that rapid flashing beacon uh, in compliance with all PennDOT standards. Now there's an existing uh, traffic signal there, correct? So what are we doing that's different? Now there's a there's a crossing there. Um, it's the flashing signals, the old style, the old style. So this project entails uh, continental crosswalks, ADA compliant ramps, and the rapid flashing beacon. Uh, when I had met Commissioner Booker on site, it's at the top of the hill, it's at the crest of the hill. So we're hoping uh, to give more warning to motorists when somebody is crossing there, because that get, takes them right to the elementary school. But this is not a traffic light, correct? Not a traffic signal, but any any sig any light or signalized flashing light in the township has to be owned, operated, and maintained by the township. Okay, so I will move for the approval of resolution number 2020-50 authorization for King of Prussia Road and Glen Mary Road intersection PennDOT application for traffic signal approval. Is there a second? Second. Is there any commissioner comment? Rich, this is your ward. This is you want this? Yes. Okay. It's, also, um, it's, it's in the bond. It was a project in the in the most recent bond. All right. I mean, I've I've had to deal with that light a bunch of times because my son uh, went to Radnor Elementary. Uh, I definitely agree that safety is a big issue right there. Um, but while while we're there, is there anything that we could do to uh, stop the bridge strikes? I know that's probably something you would like. Can you add something there to while it's blinking Steve so yeah is this is the we this was in the bond so I don't like we can't just change how we already have the estimates and all that don't we Steve okay. that's correct so they they would be two different projects this is specifically for pedestrian crossing all right let it know because it's blinking you could put another sign there saying make sure you're not 10 feet high all right. Those, sign, those signs are already existing there on both sides. Yeah, we, we have about 10 giant signs going before the bridge. Okay. Is there any staff comment? Hearing none, I will call the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Uh, motion passes seven to zero. Resolution number 2020-51, I-476 interchange, authorizing Weeds Inc. to install meadow, grass, and type L seed mix. Note, this recommendation has been moved forward based on majority approval from the Shade Tree Commission. Steve, could you lead us in? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So this is the island at Blue Root, the Blue Root and Lancaster Avenue. Uh, we were previously before the board to get uh, authorization to do design for an ENS plan of $10,000, and that was approved. There has been a, a change in, in the whole situation in that Brian O'Neill, and that's Brian O'Neill of Weeds Inc., uh, has stepped forward uh, along with, with Jonathan Alderson, landscape architects in Wayne, as well as the Shade Tree Commission. So there's been uh, a lot of work done by a lot of parties. So what Mr. O'Neill has put forth gratis is to uh, install a plan and if you look at the packet you'll see there's pictures of wildflowers and grasses so again it was a 511 recommendation from the shade tree commission 54 one abstaining one against and the project in short uh, the, the mounds of wood chips would be spread and that service is donated by all season landscaping uh, where needed Mr. O'Neill would provide the selective herbicide to remove unwanted growth. Uh, then he would do two to three applications of those EPA approved herbicides to control that growth. Uh, there's also an item in there that shows type L seed mix. That was a requirement of PennDOT. Again, Mr. O'Neill would install that type L seed mix to their specifications. Type L seed mix has a brand name called flight grass. So it's grass that grows and maxes out at about six inches. So it's not meant to be cut. It's one of the designs, one of the many uses is along the roadsides for reduced uh, He will oversee the plateau during 2020 
with a native grass mix, additional type L. Uh, he will frost seed with the wildflower mix later in the year. The wildflower mix has been donated by an anonymous Radnor resident. Uh, again, he will spot treat the invasive weeds. And uh, later on, as part of the shade tree and further projects, would be looking at trees. <laughs> so if you go to the financial impact, the value of this installation put forth by Mr. O'Neill of Weeds Inc., it's around fifty to seventy thousand dollars. Cost of the township is zero. The design of the ENS controls authorized by the commissioners, ten thousand dollars, that's no longer needed, nor is the estimated cost of the ENS controls of twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars. This plan supplants the ENS plan. Uh, the, the annual maintenance of the meadow grasses and the type L seed mix is estimated to be roughly $10,000 a year. It could be less, it could be slightly more. So based on the majority approval from the Shade Tree Commission, staff is respectfully requesting the Board of Commissioners approve the plan for the I-476 interchange, authorizing Weeds Inc. to install meadow, grass, and type L seed mix. Pending board approval, uh, we have a few small items to work out with PennDOT, and once we get their authorization, understanding again, pending board approval, uh, Mr. O'Neill is prepared to move in rather quickly. Okay, I will move for the approval of resolution number 2020-51, I-476 interchange, authorizing Weeds Inc. to install meadow grass and type L seed mix. Is there any commissioner, is there a second? Second. I'll second. Is there any commissioner comment? Yes, <clears throat> um, Steve. Can you explain to us um, what happens to all of the unsightly stumps um, that are currently there? Are those going to be removed? Are some going to be removed? Is there no, no longer a need to remove those? Um, what happens to all of the stumps there? And what remediation happens as part of this plan to prevent those uh, invasive trees from sprouting and growing again? Good question, Commissioner. So when we first met with PennDOT, uh, they did not require the stumps to be removed, but they do require them to be sprayed to address exactly what you noted. They don't want them re-sprouting. So based on this plan that we have before the commissioners tonight, those stumps will be treated so that they don't sprout. And the rest of the project will move forward. If at some future point in time under a different plan or a further plan, they need to be removed, that that's fine but under this plan they would stay in place okay that was one question thank you i appreciate that so the answer is that they're going to be treated so that they don't sprout again yeah. um my my second question was um ens that was erosion and sedimentation is that correct correct okay um when we originally discussed that part of the plan was um you know a, a matting or whatever it is to ensure that in torrential rains, we're not seeing the hillside slide down into Lancaster Avenue and onto the interchange. Um, in my discussions with uh, Commissioner Borowski, I believe she said part of this plan um, that is being proposed is a type of matting um, that helps prevent that. Is, is that part of this plan? I read through the notes. I didn't see that specifically called out, but um, what, what I guess my question ultimately is, what, what measures are taken to ensure that um, that is part of this, that that erosion doesn't happen? So we're in the packet, there was one slide, if you will, that showed type L seed mix, and that was provided by PennDOT. Yep, so I saw it, that one. So that specific area along Route 30, where the type L slash flight grass is gonna be installed, that will get matting. The rest of the site, uh, so, the rest of the site will be planted with the grasses. To this point, I, I had spoken to Chester County or to the Delaware County Conservation District. We, we don't need a permit. We're just required to stabilize the site. Okay, so, so what I'm seeing in this uh, Google Earth figure with that red wrapper um, and the PennDOT type L seed mix, it looks like it's coming off of the Blue Root and Interchange and wrapping around Lancaster, is that correct? Yes, sir. So there are the okay. steep slopes the slopes as you go up the, the one in the one ramp is very rocky. So there's really not going to be any matting or anything. Yeah, that's like a that's like a cliff that's Correct. there. Yeah. And the plateau, uh, once this 
the grasses get established, that's really our ENS control. So this plan supplants the original thought of going with ENS. We're trying to do it all at once. Uh, I did go by there this afternoon. Uh, it is starting to grow in already. So mm -hmm. that will be addressed in Mr. O'Neill's proposal. We're hoping that if we can get this all approved by all parties, he can get out there and do what he has to do and we'll get germination and then basically we're good. Okay, thank you. It sounds like a, uh, a very well thought out plan and uh, it, it certainly is cost effective. So I support it. I do wanna say again, I have to thank the Shade Tree Commission uh, they put a lot of time to this. Jonathan Alderson donated time, obviously Mr. O'Neill, and obviously All Seasons Landscaping, uh, and PennDOT. Mm -hmm. I met with PennDOT many times on this. Steve, didn't we already spend the 10000 for the sediment and erosion control plan? No, sir. Once this plan came about, I uh, put the brakes on Meliora and the ENS plan to see what was going to occur. So we haven't- Did they build anything on that? No. Why, why would we zinc or the, it, it seemed to be um, in, mentioned in a couple different places, but it said we zinc was donating 50 to 70,000. And then it said an anonymous donor was dono donating the seed. What, what's the, uh, the nature of that contribution? Uh, that is for the frost seed. That's the wildflower mix. That's who the anonymous Radnor resident donor is. So again, all seasons landscaping is going to spread those wood chips, which in itself is somewhat of an erosion and sedimentation control method, to uh, Commissioner Enderley's point. Uh, Weed Zinc is supplying the labor and materials for the various herbicides. He's doing the type L seed mix, all that labor, uh, as well as the native grass mix. So it's the wildflower mix that's getting donated by a Radnor resident. And that's worth 50 to $70,000? Everything together that I mentioned that's in the proposal, we estimate at between 50 and 70. So if you wanna go with 50, that's, that's a good thought. Well, who, how much is the anonymous person donating in cash worth? So I don't know specifically what the wildflower <laughs> wildflower is we just know that this whole package is somewhere in the fifty thousand dollar range why would we zinc do this for for no money especially when everybody else is laying people off and 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 um not having any work commissioner i, I guess he is a good-hearted man uh mr o'neill went to radnor high school uh, and has donated this i you, we really have to ask him but we did meet with him and he was very adamant that he wanted to help out. This is what he does for a living. I can't speak to why he wishes to do so, but he does wish to do so. Won't the wood chips end up on the road on Lancaster Avenue blocking up the uh, trench grain, the trench drains? No, they've been there in piles now for a few months. And again, I went today in the worst of the storm to check just that. I saw no evidence of that. And even in our erosion and sedimentation control plan, which we did not move forward with, the spreading of the wood chips was part of that plan. Uh, wood chips used as, is a valid method of erosion and sedimentation control. I have a couple questions. Um, so in the winter, I, I guess it deals with the stabilization. And, and I would like to thank Mr. O'Neill and this anonymous donor for their generous gift because this uh, is definitely a problem. And the, the quicker that we get to fix the problem, I think the, the better it is for all the stakeholders involved. Um, is this, is this going to make the ground more stable when it comes to runoff uh, than it was before or the same? Uh, my guess is that wildflowers uh, won't uh, their roots won't go in as deep as a tree. So what's going to happen uh, regarding uh, stormwater runoff? Steve, it's directed toward you. One of the items is, since we're not removing the stumps, mm -hmm. if we were to remove all of those stumps, that would be an earth disturbance, right? We would tear up the ground to do so. So from a stormwater standpoint, meadow is a good situation. Mm -hmm. 
uh, meadow with grasses and wildflowers. Uh, when we do our calculations for runoff, that's one of the better situations you have is meadow. Matter, matter of fact, our ordinance has you take, uh, we look at meadow from an, uh, an originating standpoint for when you're doing stormwater management. So meadow is good. Is it better than trees or would you want some of each? I'm not gonna say that it's better than, than forest, than trees, mm -hmm. but it's still, it's still a good situation. Uh, so I know the Shade Tree Commission and by no means am I speaking for them, but I know that in the future, they may wish to work on some type of reforestation in conjunction uh, with that. I know Mr. Gibbons, who's on the Shade Tree Commission, even talked about donating trees. So uh, I think that's something that may stand in the future, but at this point right now, we're really looking to start this work to get the site stabilized. Sure, so, and that's my next question. Will trees grow wild? Um, you know, will you get those uh, wild trees, essentially those invasive trees, will they wind up repopulating that area or is this gonna get mowed? So they would get mowed down or is this a no mow zone or, or how so is that gonna work with- uh, get mowed, Commissioner, that's part of the annual maintenance that I noted in, in there. It will get mowed? No, it, it's not intended to be mowed. The annual maintenance includes uh, the use of EPA approved herbicides to inhibit and stop unwanted growth. Now, I mean, could a tree, could a tree or trees germinate in there? Possibly. But part of the annual maintenance is to go in there and spot treat where it has to be to keep that meadow and uh, wildflower looking proper. All right, thank you. I have a question about um, some of the images that are in the packet um, showing um, you know, wildflowers uh, in bloom. And then there's the sort of um, ground grasses. Is that seasonal? Is what we're looking at, is that an example of what it would look like when it's not in bloom? Correct. You know, I think the idea of wildflowers is lovely, but what do they look like when there are no flowers? So it's a combination of both. Okay. It's the grasses and the wildflowers. Uh, so the wildflowers really take a little bit of time to get established longer than the grasses. Okay. So um, these pictures were provided by Jonathan Alderson. And so th this will be a combination of what is in those pictures is what would be on the plateau. Wildflower and grasses. So the one picture is all grasses. The other picture is all wildflower. It would be a combination of that. But the grasses would be that brown grass, not a green grass. Well, that picture you can tell was taken in the fall. That's what I'm wondering. Is that a, is that a seasonal the, the, look? Correct. Okay. One more, sorry. Are these annuals or are these perennials? You're gonna have to re replant the grass seed every year? Or? No, they're, so they're perennials. They, okay. once they're in there. Are they bulbs or just seed? Seed. Okay. Hey, Steve, Steve on, on the <laughs> erosion mat that you talked about, um, is there a cost for that? Yes, sir. So the anticipated cost for that is about $4,000. And uh, that would be, this is something that came up late. And I'm sorry that it's not in the memo because the memo was written before. So the, the matting that would be required in the type L seed mix area, which is that part of the slide would, would be provided by the township. And we would hope that since we did not use any of the $10,000 for the ENS control design, that that money could be used for that. Okay, I'm so, so there is a cost to this project. Yes, it's not, and, it's zero. and that came out later than the memo, so yeah. So, um, it's, and there's the annual maintenance also. So, uh, second point on, on that, um, so, on the shade tree committee, there's one landscaper, if I'm if I'm correct, and he has advised that the mat is not needed. Is that correct? Well, what it comes down to is PennDOT is requiring that matting, so we really don't have a choice. 
So this is PennDOT's property that we're doing this on and they are providing specific requirements and that is one of them. Okay. Um, and so um, following on to that, that comment, in future agendas, I'd appreciate if we're gonna include three emails as part of a chain, that we get the whole chain of emails um, so I get complete context and know exactly what people are saying and why they've said it and some of their supporting detail behind it. Um, receiving three emails was, you know, basically cherry picking what we wanted to put in the agenda. Um, and, you know, I, th I think this is a good plan. Uh, I like that so much is being donated, but I am not going to be able to support a plan where we are accepting uh, from an anonymous donor. Um, I don't know why the board can't be made aware of the, the donor. I just don't think that's good practice for, for the township. I'm not comfortable even with 50 or 70,000, let alone from an anonymous donor. Um, if, if, if somebody's giving the township value, they can give us a discount. If they want to give a 30% discount, maybe, but I mean, just to give a $50,000, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with that, especially with the anonymous component. They give Why us a thirty percent discount off of one hundred and fifty. I'm sorry, Jack. I missed everybody. Yeah. Uh, Dan, Jack. I, I'm not sure what the problem is with a discount off of one hundred and fifty of fifty thousand dollars at a third, but not taking fifty thousand dollars. That's one hundred percent. But regardless, uh, well, I mean, Steve, if, if really, the township should pay full value for for work performed for the township. Okay, I so don't Steve, think that we should get into accepting, especially from anonymous people, gifts and, and, and large gifts of fifty to seventy thousand dollars. Not comfortable with that. We don't know the person, the motivation. We don't know anything about it, and um, I'm not comfortable with accepting large gifts from anonymous people. Well, that happens at the Willows. Are you not? Are you not comfortable with what's going on at the Willows, Rich? Great question. Uh, well. I, I don't know what's going on at the Willows. I have no idea who's no, giving what. There's a million dollars not, from an anonymous giving, donor giving that was donated. Township. Can I just, can I, so I haven't spoken yet. Can I just say something? So um, I attended the meeting as a rep from the shade, to the shade tree. Uh, several shade tree committee members were there, um, as well as Mr. Alderston, who has collaborated with Mr. O'Neill to put this plan together. So we've got a landscape architect who's donated his time again. Uh, just Mr. Alderson also donated all his time to the landscaping plan with the trees up in North Wayne, up on North Wayne Ave. Am I correct, uh, Steve, about that? He donated his support and help in choosing the trees that went in up there. Uh, he did have input. Okay. And then Mr. O'Neill. So this plan has been put together by uh, the two of them together, uh, along with Four Seasons, who's going to be... Um, doing the um, the install or co collaborating as well. So I think all told, all of the professional uh, services, this is all part of the estimate, this estimated range of the donation that you've put together, correct, Steve? I would say that the actual, um, you know, the actual items like the seed and things like that are probably the least of what we've received when it comes to this donation. I think a lot of it is around the professional services and certainly the install. Steve, would you say? Yeah, I, I would say roughly speaking that the work being offered by Weeds Inc., the work itself is around, you know, $50,000 is a reasonable estimate for that. We were estimating between 25,000 and 35,000 for ENS work, which was the significantly less in cost of what's happening here. So, you know, I think the, the fact that we had an anonymous donor, certainly that came through to donate, um, you know, the frost seed, which I think is very, very generous. Um, you know, this project has been something, it, I mean, right now it's an absolute eyesore. Um, it is something that has, true. I think, uh, you know, inflamed the community in a way that we haven't seen any other project really. And to have somebody step forward and offer this to us, uh, multiple people offer their professional services um, and to offer, you know, their time and their effort 
in this just to do something nice for Radner, I think is, um, I think it's pretty incredible. And they were very honest and earnest in the meeting we had. Uh, I don't believe there's any ulterior motive to this other than to take something that was rendered horrible uh, and ugly and uh, turn it into something that makes the township proud because they are township residents. So, you know, I'm not sure about the anonymous donor. I, I thank them too. This is new. I think that came, this came forward after uh, the meeting that was held several weeks ago when we were still able to meet face to face um, about this. And, you know, uh, Shade Tree has, uh, has blessed it. Um, and that is what we wanted. That was our initial intent with this, whatever came forward with regards to this, that we wanted it to come through Shade Tree. We wanted them to vet the project for us. Uh, this seems like a win-win. Now, I will say that certainly I don't discount the concerns about accepting uh, gifts, and we do need a gift acceptance policy. I think Commissioner Mulroney has mentioned this. Um, we do have, so I do have something that I would like um, us to work on. We can work with um, the solicitor, with uh, John, to get something done. We should have something moving forward, but given that we need to act on this and we need to, um, you know, get this moving in order to try to make a wrong right, uh, I, I, I can't imagine a better way or She froze up. Lisa, did we just <laughs> lose you? She froze up. Uh, just one question, Steve. If we wanted to do something else with this area, this the plan, that won't hurt us from, from doing, um, if there was going to be another plan which would encompass more landscaping or design, this wouldn't stop us from doing that, right? No, sir. We would not. Steve, just... Um, just because I've, I've seen some of the conversations you've had with PennDOT, uh, at least by email, um, PennDOT's been pretty, pretty clear in that what they want on that site is something that's low maintenance um, and pretty simple. So, I mean, and this plan satisfies that criteria. So I'm not sure I mean, anything more expansive than what's been proposed here is going to, PennDOT's going to weigh heavily in on. And Mr. White, you're correct. So, like I say, we have a few details to work out on this plan, but any future plans, it's going to have to be authorized by PennDOT. So we're, we're going to maintain this and basically the plateau, other than the annual $10,000 for spot spraying, is pretty much maintenance free. Um, the Type L grass does not have to be mowed, which is very low maintenance, but it Anything in the future, we have to go to PennDOT to get their blessing. Lisa, you got cut off. Do you want to finish from where the technology failed us? I don't know where I got cut off, so I don't want to uh, go back. And but I, you know, like I, I said, I, I, I think this is an excellent option, um, and I think that we should, we should uh, move forward with it. And and I and I thank all of the uh, the donors who are making, making this, uh, making it possible for us to do this. I'd just like to go on record and, uh, and thank the Shade Tree Commission um, and the donors, um, but, but also our township staff, um, Steve, Bill, others, um, that uh, in, in Lisa's words are working as hard as possible um, to uh, make uh, lemons out of lemonade uh, <laughs> or uh, lemonade out of lemons here uh, in what we've been dealt. Um, and I, I think that this plan is the, uh, the best option, especially given the, uh, the economic uh, issues um, that are facing us. So thank you to everyone that's been involved in trying to move this forward. I think that we should move on it. And, and Jack, Jack, just to be clear, um, I support the project. Uh, I like the plan, it's low maintenance. Um, I'm okay with receiving services from people who uh, are identified and that we've met and are comfortable with. Um, similar to the, the, the Willows, I was not uh, supportive of accepting a million dollar donation from an anonymous donor. I thought he had to be made, or, or she, if that was what it was to be, had to be identified to at least the board. Um, and I want to be consistent with that position here uh, and with any anonymous donor. 
<laughs> we can move on. Is there one, any staff one comment? Other thing, one, one last thing. Why not? Why not remove those stumps? I. It's not going to look nice with those, even if it's all flowers and all those stumps that are there. You're not going to see the stumps. They're all yeah. low to the ground, and there is yeah, no they're, need they're, to remove them from what they've said because of the treatment that they're able to do on them. By removing those stumps, you create a very serious erosion problem. You're uprooting not just the stumps, but all of the deep roots of those trees. When you do that, you are upsetting the soil and you are creating a much bigger mess than we already have. Treating them is the best option. Uh, I, I'm very familiar with stump removal and, and landscaping, Damien, thank you. The, well, then you'll, then you'll understand <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah, what the comments look. are. It's I'm glad you look. understand it's it. Look. It's, you're going to be able to see those stumps. You're not. This grass is going to be, what did you say? This grass is going to be um, how, how many inches high? The flight grass on the slopes is roughly six inches. Mm -hmm. uh, the, wild, the, the other grass that's in there, I, I don't know, eight, 12 inches high, maybe the higher. Yeah, there, there's, there's, there's none of those stumps that are over 10 or, or 10 or 12 inches high right now. Those stumps, those roots are still holding the ground together, Rich. If you go mm -hmm. in there, you're gonna, you're gonna call, it's gonna be expensive and you're gonna cause, I mean, you're, you're, it's like, you know, the old adage, like, don't go looking for trouble. You start knocking down walls and digging holes, you're gonna find more trouble than you're gonna want to get into. Mm -mm. That's Very staff comment. Remove the stumps and a large okay, we can't go around in circles like this, guys. Place. I, I would remove the stumps too, honestly. I think that we hear you. I think we're going to move on now. Is there any staff comment? Hearing none, we have one public comment which I'll read. Hello, this is Mark D'Onofrio. I am writing this quickly because this email must be synchronous with the BOC meeting. In particular, regarding the 13 April 2020 BOC meeting, I would like to participate. How does this work? Do I send specific comments or do I connect via Zoom? I asked because I tried last month, last month and nobody responded to my emailed public comment. If Radner is not ready to accommodate remote public comment via Zoom, I would still like to include the following in lieu of my formal five minute public comment. One, I reviewed the Radner BOC agenda and then watched the Shade Tree meeting. Question, why is the BOC suddenly considering one bid for N Weeds Inc., the company which I now see gets a one star review on Yelp, for N Close, to install a meadow before we even know the second phase design proposals. Why not the Brandywine Conservancy? Why not another company? Wasn't the March meeting, which was supposed to discuss final design options, canceled? If this meeting wasn't canceled, it wasn't posted online. My position is that such an important decision should be delayed until enough citizens can focus on the 476 interchange and participate. It doesn't mean that there can't be a temporary solution to the stabilize any flooding during the COVID-19 crisis but any temporary planting or emergency work should not override second phase design decisions. Remember, this issue led to the resignation of the previous township manager. We should not treat it lightly with few involved. I propose, too, that the BOC create a new technology board, something that is the digital equivalent in status for Shade Tree Commission or the Planning Commission. My tentative name for this is the Urban Information Systems Technology Panel. The mandate should be to consolidate the collective knowledge of Radner's IT and design professionals to develop the kinds of nimble and decentralized urban information systems that aided Taiwan in its response to COVID-19. Commissioner Abel is familiar with the foreign affairs article to which I am referring. I can elaborate further if the BOC votes to include this item in its next agenda. I would also be willing to recruit many good professionals and even set up a website. This panel could also supervise the development of GIS infrastructure and mobile tech to combat other important issues such as flooding, the possibilities are endless. Three, when this crisis is over, the BOC should continue to allow remote public comment. I say this because as a contractor, I can't always get back from work, shower, and then attend these meetings by 6.30. And when I do, the BOC often delays the most important elements until the end. Remote comment would also broaden the scope of citizen participation to the young and technologically proficient urban professionals and entrepreneurs who are increasingly moving into the township. I'll stop here because I don't know how remote participation works at this stage. I apologize for any typos because I had to do this fast. Stay safe. Um, I will now call the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. 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 
Motion passes five to two. Moving on to item 3C, resolution, uh, resolution number 2020-52, amending resolution 2020-45, by further extending the business privilege and mercantile tax filing and payment deadline to September 15, 2020, Further reducing the permittable 2020 gross receipts estimate to be 50% of 2019 actual. Uh, Mr. Tate, Mr. White, if one of the two of you want to lead us in on this. I'll start and then Bob, you can fill in uh, any blanks or any spaces that I leave. Um, not, not too long after the board adopted 2045, uh, which uh, extended the filing deadline back to mid-July to match what the IRS had done with the federal uh, income tax filing deadline, and then also reduced the 2020 estimate uh, from 100 down to 80 percent. So not long after the board adopted that, uh, the governor extended the um, stay-at-home order or the shutdown order, if you will, uh, through the end of April. And uh, there was some immediate feedback from some of the more harder hit businesses that, um, you know, what, what initially thought was going to be a few weeks has now turned into two months and uh, significantly raised concerns among some of the smaller businesses that this could lag on even further. Um, so some requests had been uh, asking if the board would consider uh, further extending the filing deadline uh, and then also consider um, further reducing the amount of the 2020 estimate to 50% of the 2019 actual. Um, so that's what you're looking at here. Um, Bob uh, had prepared some estimated calculations because uh, when, when we talked about 2020-45, uh, there was, um, we spent some time talking about how it actually would impact impact or benefit the businesses, and then also how it would benefit the township in terms of revenue recognition, or at least the timing of revenue recognition. Uh, so today, Bob had uh, passed around to all the commissioners an example calculation. Hopefully everyone had a chance to look at that. It was um, just a real simple uh, top portion of the tax statement. Um, but you could see when you look at the actual statement or the actual um, the, the filing, how this type of reduction could help a business. Uh, a, couple, a couple things to keep in mind is that um, this, it's an option for the business to elect to use some percentage less than 100%. Um, obviously the floor, if adopted, the floor would become 50%. But if you're a business that has uh, been able to, to stay active during uh, the shutdown or uh, even uh, mostly active, um, you could, they could always use a, a 75, 80, 90, whatever percentage they feel is going to more accurately reflect what they think their 2020 gross receipts will be versus 2019. Um, and that would, that would benefit them from a tax perspective in that um, it would more accurately reflect their filing this year uh, and increase the amount of tax expense this year, which they could obviously include in, include in their federal income tax filing. But then maybe more importantly is that next year, if they get back to 100% of 2019 actuals, um, if they underestimate or if they significantly reduce their estimate, uh, their tax expense next year is going to increase significantly as much as 50%. Um, so again, we're doing this, uh, and I, the, the businesses that this would really benefit are the ones that are the hardest hit. Um, we have a lot of businesses that um, have not been hit as hard as others. I don't think that the, this resolution or even 2020-45 was really aimed at helping those folks out. Um, so um, that's where we're at with this. Uh, Bob, I don't know if I left anything out or any uh, context you would like to add. Yeah, <clears throat> so you covered a lot. I think. Um... The one point I like to make is, as you mentioned, this helps the smaller businesses who are significantly impacted by the cash flow crunch they're experiencing. Um, so this is a tremendous benefit for many of the retail and smaller, smaller companies in town. The larger businesses who may not feel the same type of impact or, you know, maybe their stock price is affected, but their cash flow and revenues might be, might continue to be healthy. Um, they're going to be interested in making sure they match revenues and expenses and also 
uh, paying a proper estimate to take full advantage from a tax standpoint of getting the write-off of their local tax expense. So I think there's tremendous, ben again, tremendous benefit to the smaller businesses. Um, we may not see a 50% decrease in revenue uh, given the, how the larger businesses tend to operate. Uh, but in our analysis, we've prepared um, kind of a range to, to account for that. And I think um, hopefully this, this gives some comfort to the board that if this resolution passes, that we'll have the means to, to manage cash flow through the balance of the year. So thank you for bringing that up, Bob. There's uh, a little bit more on that in terms of how it impacts the, the township's operating statement. Um, first of all, it, ultimately, whatever the business's gross receipts are and what they're filing and payment should be is what they're gonna file and pay on. So whether it happens this year uh, as part of one of these amended filing criteria or next year um, when they reconcile um, between their 2020 estimate and actual. Um, where this benefits the township is that if there is a business that is hardest hit, uh, this gives them the opportunity to recognize that hit in 2020 uh, when they're filing on their, basically their 2019 activity. Uh, so that it, Radner's revenue and the hit that we are anticipating as a result of uh, the shutdown order and the, the economic situation that we're in, uh, we would realize that in 2020. Uh, if absent uh, these amendments, the one that was already adopted or uh, amended with this resolution, what would end up happening is, is uh, we would probably have overstated revenues for 2020. Uh, and then in 2021, uh, we would uh, realize the, the revenue loss that is happening right now. So uh, the that the benefit to the township's operating statement, I'm saying benefit, not necessarily in a good way, because no matter under any circumstances, we're anticipating a drop in revenue. Uh, but the benefit is, is that we're realizing it at the same time it's happening, instead of having to wait a year and see what that number looks like next year. You're speeding up the hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're matching the hurt with uh, the timing of when it's when it's happening. Sure. That makes sense. It's forward looking. So I think that it's fine with me. You're, you're going to take a hit sooner than later. So whatever we can do to help small businesses and be small, small business friendly and Radner is known for that. I think that's important that uh, our small business owners uh, and our large business owners for that part know that we're, you know, we want to work with them and we're a good place to live and a good place to do business as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to move for the approval of resolution number 2020-52, amending resolution 2020-45 by further extending the business privilege and mercantile tax filing and payment deadline to September 15, 2020. And further reducing the minimum 2020 gross receipts estimate to be 50% of 2019 actual. Is there a second? Second. I'll... Okay, Commissioner Comment. Is there any additional staff comment? No, sir. Hearing none and seeing no public comment on this issue, I'll call the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion passes unanimously. Resolution number 2020-53, nomination of William White as township manager. Um, I will lead us into this and then I'll move for it. Um, We've obviously been living in some very strange and uncertain times for the past little while. The rest of you don't get to see quite as much work that Bill is putting in as I do. I can tell you that he is hustling. I sign his time cards. He is putting in a lot of hours every week and he is doing a phenomenal job at what it is that he is doing. Um, it is important to me that the township solidify his position as township manager. He is presently the acting manager. And I say that for two different uh, reasons. The first is we're an employer and we have an obligation to our employees to recognize good work with promotion, raises, and everything else that any other employer would do for their workforce. Uh, the second is, and this is really where the rubber meets the road, the township needs the leadership that Bill is displaying. And we need to make sure that we continue to have that leadership going forward. Uh, 
And we need it for a couple of different reasons. The first is next year when we're not thinking about the COVID-19 crisis anymore, we're going to need Hill White. And there will be other townships who are going to see what it is that he is doing for us right now. And if we don't act with some degree of alacrity, they're going to move in where we don't. And while Bill is tremendously dedicated to Radnor, he is, as he should be, also very dedicated to his career and his family. And if we're unable to make him the offer that he deserves, as I led with, he will eventually have to go somewhere else. Um, but it's not just what's going to happen next year that's concerning to me. I have been the substitute teacher in the past. I've had substitute teachers in the past. And with the best goodwill in the world, they do not get treated the same way that the full-time teacher does. Uh, in this context, Bill is right now our substitute teacher. He's the acting manager. Uh, he needs, when he is negotiating for resources on behalf of Radnor Township with the county, the state, and the federal government, to have all of the possible authority that we can give him. And that means that he needs to be the full-time manager, both for how he's treated internally, externally, and everything else. So those are my reasons. With that in mind, I'm going to move for resolution 2020-53, the nomination of William White as township manager, and I'll open up the floor after I get a second to the group. I'll sec I second that. <clears throat> okay, is there any commissioner comment? So I will just uh, add on to what Jack has said. Uh, you know, I think it's very important in this, uh, in this time that we, uh, that we do recognize excellence. And uh, Bill has certainly stepped up in a way that I don't think we ever imagined. I'm sure he never imagined um, when we uh, handed him the reins of the township back in uh, January. So, you know, I do believe, as Jack stated, that, um, you know, you need to acknowledge when someone is doing an outstanding job. Bill's basically been on a three month job interview um, every single day, uh, every single hour. So, um, sorry about that. So I think um, this is more than appropriate. Um, I think that Bill is uh, going to offer us the leadership we need now. And uh, I believe that his institutional knowledge and his financial uh, knowledge of the, the township and running it for 10 years is gonna serve us well as we move forward and have certainly some uh, rocky road a little bit ahead of us um, based on what we, uh, what, we're, what we think we're seeing. And I think that that's gonna serve us well when uh, we're trying to marry that with operations. Um, so I would wholeheartedly support this. And Bill, thank you for what you've done for us up to this point. I know you've been answering emails. I get emails from you at like 1.30 in the morning. So uh, I'm not sure when you're sleeping. And uh, I wanna let you know that, uh, that I am grateful for it and appreciate it. And, when I published this in my newsletter uh, that went out to my constituents yesterday, I received numerous emails from residents um, in support of this, in support of your um, becoming the township manager. And I, am, uh, I wholeheartedly agree with them, so. I'd like to um, continue to echo, echo um, the, the words of my colleagues that um, in a time of crisis, you've stepped up in a way that um, nobody could have predicted what was gonna be needed and, and you stepped in and to riff off of the substitute teacher. Um, I think you are a teacher. I came on as a new board member. You were director of finance and took the time to sit with me um, and teach me the budget going through line by line. You had it you prepared for the conversation in such a um, really, um, you know, you, you'd given it a lot of thought and, and highlighted sections that were gonna be very important for a new commissioner and I appreciate that. And I see that same um, respect that you have for every single resident, anything that I have to forward on to you or somebody has reached out to you and you circle me on, the way that you respond to even those who are difficult um, with, with as much um, measured and thorough response. And I know you're busy and you still take the time to write four paragraphs about the closed trails to somebody who's upset or um, um, those types of emails that just need, um, you know, like I said, a measured hand. And I appreciate that you were bringing calm to a storm. Um, I can't imagine that there's a better candidate out there. And I thank you for everything that you have been doing and um, that you will be doing for us going forward. So thanks, Bill. 
I too will just briefly echo in that um, I uh, I was uh, surprised by the storm that we dealt with here in the third ward uh, on the hill at 476 uh, in January. Uh, I was met head on by it um, by constituents. Um, we got through that storm. Um, and uh, I fear that the storm that is ahead of us uh, financially in this township will pale in comparison compared to uh, the isolation um, and the fear um, that we're all dealing with right now um, in terms of this current COVID crisis. Um, I think that the impact will be long lasting, um, both on uh, business owners, both small and large, as well as residents in Radnor Township. Um, and I think that the fiscal discipline that you've shown, um, Bill, over the last 10 years um, in your leadership um, is what is going to be needed um, to help us get through the, 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 the very real storm that is gonna be long lasting ahead. Uh, I too have received a number of comments, uh, have talked to folks on the street um, over the last couple of days, um, and there is nothing but, uh, but full support um, in terms of your leadership ability. Um, and I've interacted with, uh, with township staff um, who uh, work in public works and their full support is, again, uh, is around you. So um, I too will um, throw my, uh, my vote towards this. I think it's uh, the right decision and I look forward to working with you in the future. So, so I, don't, I don't disagree with any of the comments and, and the work that Bill's done, um, but as many of you know, or all of you are aware, I've uh, advocated from the beginning for a more public process that included interviews, um, um, uh, including the public as well. Um, and, and I agree, like this would have been Bill's job interview. I mean, what he's done over the last three months and it probably would have fared well. Um, and, and that's how I envisioned it. I don't see the rush to do this tonight. Um, uh, Jack, I, I, don't, I don't agree that we need a permanent township manager to go after state or federal funding. If that was the case, every governor would be filling vacancies with, with congressional vacancies to make sure that they're going after that money too. I, I, so I don't, I don't agree with that position. Um, so I'm going to uh, do a motion to table this, uh, this resolution until we are back and meeting at the township building. Okay, there's a motion to table. Is second. there a second? Second. Okay, I'll call the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. Aye. Motion to table fails five to two. Uh, so, all right. I, you go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, 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 Brett, you go ahead. Um, I, I think Bill's great. He's a great guy. Ohio State guy that knows his football. And the finance guy, I really, really think it's a great idea to have a finance person as township manager who really understands the ins and outs of the debt financing and the taxes and the ERP. And uh, I think that that's very much benefit. I share the concern that doing this now in a, in a, uh, in a video meeting in um in, in, in not doing the process we talked about a process earlier in the year before the covid emergency was declared by the governor and i think that um bill would come through that and that we would have the um additional buy-in from the public by going through the process and i i think that that that's something that we we should consider and it's something that i i didn't raise it jack you would raise that we would have a process that would um uh be similar or exactly as commissioner abel alluded to so i'm very supportive i know that he can do the job um, but i don't want to shortchange the process and i don't want to do it in a electronic meeting that doesn't support the 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 seriousness and the long term commitment that that we that we would have for this. 
So um, I, I do want to kind of I'll, I'll follow up on what you're saying, Rich. I, 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 the one thing I agree with you is is um, it's a shame because uh, Bill, you've uh, you've worked your tail off, and I've said to you before this this promotion is is bittersweet. I, I wish we could give you a better uh, standing uh, standing ovation for the job that you've done. Um, you've definitely earned this. You deserve it. Um, your award seven guy. So, uh, you know, that's good with me. No, uh, I, I, like I said, I've, I've known you from the township as well as sometimes outside of the township. And you've, uh, proven to me that, um, you're a family man, you have a good heart, you're a dedicated father, you're astute. I personally, I have the utmost confidence in you from everything that I've seen and your ability to steward, uh, the township. And that's what your job will be to steward the township and to run the, the township. Um, so you definitely have my support. The only thing, and, and I'll bring this up, um, um, we're talking about a 5% raise currently. I'll be honest, I think that's too low uh, for everything that you've done. Uh, I personally would like to see that go up to 10% right off the bat. Um, I don't want to tell everybody what you're making um but i think that it's important um i did the math and uh you know and what that comes out to is uh if you factored that five percent over 50 weeks uh or 52 weeks a year and you're working an additional 20 hours a week it comes out to about six dollars an hour and that's whoa, 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 now whoa, you're whoa. now you're you, you're just doing what you said you weren't going to do yeah, sean right, so. No, we I can never, all reverse engineer the math from that. You think that it's not a high enough dollar figure. I, I, I don't want to. I know. So I would like to make a motion to, to at least bring that up to 10%. Okay, so there's a motion to amend. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. 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 Motion fails four to three. Okay. Well, anyway, um, Bill, um, congratulations on your new role. You've uh, you've earned it, and uh, good luck. So, thank you. So, uh, Jack, I, I think it's important to note that you know this this is a you know the five percent is a temporary. Um, Jack, do you want to describe what our intent is after, you know, at some point to make this more permanent, to talk about a contract? Yeah, so the problem that we have, obviously, is that we can't really enter into a salary conversation or uh, uh, even a contract negotiation via Zoom with COVID-19 going around. That requires getting lawyers involved. Um, it's really the kind of thing that you want to do with, with a face-to-face meeting. I also frankly have concerns while we are still waiting for the COVID-19 crisis to end, while we have people in the township who are getting salary cuts, being furloughed, losing their jobs altogether, seeing their businesses taken apart from the outside. Um, I have issues announcing the kind of pay raise that I think would be required in order to put Mr. White into a position financially that would be commensurate with his position within the township. So for those reasons, the proposition was a 5% raise, which is intended to be nominal. And as soon as the COVID-19 crisis is resolved, and I think actually we include this in the resolution, um, mm -hmm. is further resolved that the Board of Commissioners shall enter into contract negotiations to establish Mr. White's permanent compensation as township manager not later than one month following the conclusion of the present disaster emergency. So we will, as a board, get working on what the final package is as basically as soon as we're done. It'll be on the first meeting or the second meeting after we get back into the township room. Uh, by way of Quick additional comment with respect to the process. I am one of the people who is pushing for a more or less public pro uh, process to bring a manager in, allowing members of the public to come in, meet, talk with the other people. Um, I'll be honest with you, at this point, I don't foresee that happening for a couple of different reasons. First off, 
I mean, we're already months behind where we wanted to be because of COVID-19. I don't know when we're going to be able to go back to that. And if Bill were to remain as our acting manager, in addition to all of the other issues that I've raised, it would mean that we prolong that process by five months, three months. I don't know. Um, I imagine that we're going to have a very busy next couple of months because everything that we're not doing over these Zoom meetings is going to get pushed to immediately afterwards. And frankly, we're not going to be in a position to hold meetings with other people. And also, frankly, it's not fair to the other people. Bill is doing such a great job. Not one of us has said anything, but we love Bill. We think Bill is going to be the township manager. I don't want to bring some poor guy in from California to interview for a job that we've all basically made up our minds about. It's mean. So while Bill was frankly my odds on favorite going into that process, I was at least going to be open minded enough to be persuadable to go elsewhere. At this point, it's frankly my position. If we think that Bill is doing a good enough job, they won't, we want to keep him as the head of state while we or the head of the ship while we're going through the COVID-19 crisis, then he needs to be our full-time manager and let's not waste anyone else's time. If we don't think he's doing a good enough job, then let's give it to somebody else because this is as much of a crisis as we can get into, but I'm hearing nothing but good things. Is there any additional public, uh, sorry, commissioner comment? Is there any staff comment? Yes, sir. If I could, um, I would, um, I would just like to thank uh, each commissioner for the, the positive comments tonight. Um, I, I completely respect the process uh, and hopefully that's come through in my communication with all of you over the last uh, several weeks. Um, I am humbled, uh, extremely humbled by the, the, the praise tonight. For those of you that know me better, you know that, that this isn't something I, I, I'm not real good at sitting back and listening to people uh, talk about me nice, <laughs> say nice things about me. It's, it's tough to sit here, um, but it's very emotionally uh, gratifying and, and um, I'm very thankful. Uh, I would like to, to thank the board at the same time uh, for your, your leadership and support uh, over the last couple of months. I, I don't think any of us could anticipate what was gonna happen at the end of um, January uh, or at the end of January, none of us could predict what was about to happen with everything going on um, but your leadership and support uh, in agreement and in disagreement over the last couple of weeks has been uh, refreshing and at the end of the day it's all gone to help the community which uh, is what we're all here to do um, and then also uh, I have to thank the folks that I work with every day um, a few of the folks are on this uh, meeting with us with Chris Steve Bob uh, Tammy Kevin uh, Steve McNellis and all of the the department heads who have helped me out um, they they uh, quite frankly are uh, an amazing team and I'm happy to I'm happy to be part of it or I have been uh, for the last 10 years um, so uh, for those that have reached out to you individually and supported me I um, I really appreciate that um, I've always tried to be open and honest with the staff um, uh, just like with you guys uh, we get a we agree a lot of the times, we disagree a lot of the times, but at the end of the day, everybody walks away with a mutual understanding that uh, it was an open conversation and we heard each side and uh, we're moving in a direction based on um, facts and uh, desired outcome. So um, I do appreciate all that. I appreciate um, the position I'm in and your support uh, for that. So um, thank you all very much. And um, here's to uh, the future. <laughs> Hmm. Is there any additional staff comment? Yes, sir. So from a from your engineer who's worked for four other township managers, I've got to tell you, Bill White has done an outstanding job as interim, and I know he will do an outstanding job as our permanent manager. So I don't think you could make a better choice whatsoever. Thank you. Is there any additional staff comment? Yes, uh President Larkin, if I could just state that uh, it's so important for township staff to have an identified leader and challenges come up, and I think it's an unprecedented challenge we're in. Uh, Mr. White has stepped in as a leader and taken the reins of the township during uncertain times. I thank him for that. I know the staff thanks for that, and I appreciate the commissioners 
wanting to move forward, uh, protecting the staff, most importantly, protecting the residents and businesses of Radnor Township by establishing a leadership plan that um, helps us continue on in service to the community. It'll be our pleasure to serve Mr. White and as always the commissioners. Uh, thank you for listening. If I could, I'd like to chime in, though. Um, am I muted? Nope. No, we can, we can hear you. We can hear you. Thank you. I, I've been here eight years, and I've had the pleasure and the honor to work uh, with Bill and in Bill's department. And I have said from the beginning, out, and I continue to say, that working under Bill's leadership, uh, he has created a culture that just allows other, people's, other people around him to really grow and thrive and just brings out the best in people's abilities. It's truly been an honor, and I look forward to serving under Bill's leadership going forward. So thank you, board, for uh, moving this along and, and giving Bill the honor and, and the position that he so deserves at this time. We have uh, two public comments that I'll read. The first is again from Mr. Mark D'Onofrio, Ray, resident participation, April 13, BOC meeting. What is the Zoom meeting ID and password? But essentially, those were my three comments, which you can email to the rest of the BOC or have someone read aloud. I also have one additional comment. We should delay any nomination of the township manager until we are out of disaster mode. Not enough people can participate, and we really should publicly vet some other candidates. That is not to say I don't want the interim man township manager, Mr. White, to be the township manager, but a one-bid nomination when the majority of community is under a mandatory isolation order does not look proper. This item was also added to the agenda very late. I have an additional email from Mary Lou Nepshield, Ray Resolution Number 2020-53, nomination of William White as Township Manager. Good evening, Commissioners. I wanted to let you know that I wholeheartedly support your nomination of Bill White as Township Manager. I've worked for the Township for 13 years, and for the last 10 years, I've had the pleasure of having Bill as my direct supervisor as the, as the Director of Finance. I have found Bill to be honest, stable, and transparent in his duties. He is thoughtful in his processes, and his attention to detail is phenomenal. He always has the best interest of the citizens of the township as well as all of our dedicated employees and their families in mind. I agree with you that Bill has shown outstanding competence and leadership during this crisis, this recent crisis, as acting township manager. He's leading all of our employees, paren, with the help of our police department and health department, of course, paren, close, through this uncharted territory in an impressive way. I must admit that I'll be very sorry to lose Bill as our department head, but thrilled to gain such a great township manager. It is well-deserved, exclamation point. Respectfully, Mary Lou Nepshield. Seeing no additional public comment on this issue, I will call the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Mr. Weiss. And I am so sorry. Oh, bye. Drink when this is all over, Bill. Ah. <laughs> this is a standing ovation. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Congratulations, Bill. Congratulations. So, do we have any reports of standing committees? Hearing none, do we have any new business? Hearing none, do we have any old business? Hearing none, I'll move on to the public comment that doesn't directly relate to one of the issues that we have on the agenda. This is from Gail Morrison, comment, North Wayne Stormwater Management. Good evening. I would like to enter into the public record today, April 13, 2020, the following comments. The North Wayne flood reduction projects appear to be stalled again. Many residents met with the township personnel, Peren Capella and Norsini, Peren Close, and Mark Henderson from Meliora Design in June, July, and during individual on-site property meetings in October and November. This was six months ago or longer. We were expecting to know how many or what percentage of properties along Gulf Creek were participating in the proposed program to regrade and replant all of the stormwater swales through North Wayne to contain more water and slow the, fl the flow of rushing rainwater runoff during storms. This would lessen roadway flooding and property damage during heavy storm events that the township has repeatedly documented and paid to repair on our roads and in our parks. During these events, inundation and, infil and infiltration, paren I and I, paren close, 
of stormwater into the sanitary sewer system occurs throughout North Wayne. This is an EPA and DEP violation that Radnor is responsible for fixing. This occurs because the stormwater has been engineered to leave developed and paved land and dump into the swales, overwhelming the systems. I realize Radnor is contending with the same emergency the world is with the COVID-19 induced shutdown and finances and plans are changing every minute. But this is a commitment Radnor has already invested heavily in and it is a matter of public health and safety that it be addressed after decades of inaction. As we have repeatedly urged for 10 years, this is a public safety emergency as roads and homes become inaccessible and residents are trapped in their homes or cars. If Meliora cannot produce more work product that gets this project to bid, Badger needs to act now to address that. Please update the residents as soon as possible as property values and real estate assessments are constantly changing and these flood events and flood risks affect that. Gail Morrison. Mark D'Onofrio writes again, forward, resident participation, April 13 BOC meeting. Please refer below. This as well as my three addition comments tonight is my five minute public comment, best Mark D'Onofrio. Uh, he includes as a forward the previous public comments that I have read. Um, he then writes, I also have two additional comments. Four, we should delay any nomination of the township manager until we are out of disaster mode. Not enough people can participate and we really should publicly vet some other candidates. That is not to say I don't want the interim township manager, Mr. White, to be the township manager, but a one bid nomination when the majority of the community is under a mandatory isolation order does not look proper. This yeah. item was also added to the agenda very late. Five, when will Radnor residents be able to contribute via Zoom? This was not possible tonight. It is really difficult to watch a BOC meeting online and type timely questions via email to each resolution. Finally, from, or at least thus far, finally, from Michael Richardson, feedback. Jack, my family and I had a good hike at Marsh Creek and good bike ride on the Chester Valley Trail last weekend. All Radnor is doing is pushing the issue to the other townships. We could be in this situation for a long while. The healthier you are, the better your chances are of survival. Let's think about this and not defer to a local EMT to calculate the risk benefit ratio for everyone. Thanks for listening, Michael Richardson. That concludes public comment. So I will move for adjournment. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Everyone, thanks for the meeting. Good night. Thank Congratulations. You. Congratulations, Bill. Congrats, Bill. Yeah. Thank you.